The intensive air raids and the inhumane atrocities committed by the Japanese during World War II developed the young Ikeda's profound hatred for war, its cruelty, stupidity and waste. One day, the young Ikeda witnessed an America B-29 bomber being shot down by anti-aircraft fire. Although the American pilot safely parachuted to the ground, he was attacked by some people in the crowd that had gathered. We got him! We got the Americans! We got the Americans! Get the military police! Banzai! 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 The pilot was then dragged away by the military police. Ikeda went home and told his mother what had happened. She replied in a genuine feeling. How terrible. His mother must be very worried about him. To his mother, it was not important whether the pilot was an enemy or not. Her words greatly impressed the young Ikeda and they were permanently engraved in his heart. The prolonged war had taken its toll on the Japanese people. The Ikeda family was not spared. Besides helping his family make ends meet, the young Ikeda was also struggling with his poor health. He had been suffering from tuberculosis and was often troubled by fever and dry coughs, leaving him terribly weak and tired. His weak health persisted even after the war had ended. After the war, the young Ikeda continued to search for something that would give him a sense of of purpose and direction. His burning desire was to seek an answer to the question. What is the correct way to live? Standing by the shore of Morigasaki Beach, the young Ikeda and his friend look into the vast and distant horizon. Deeply troubled by the sense of hopelessness that filled Japan after the war, they pondered where they could find a philosophy and a mentor to teach them how they could transform despair into hope. Recalling his walks with his friend inspired the young Ikeda to pen the poem Morigasaki Beach. He writes, I wish you all luck, my friend. Next time we meet, when will it be? Wordless we depart upon our separate journeys. Silver waves sway gently. Morigasaki. The young Ikeda had always kept in touch with his friend, Sakata and Mikawa, who paid visits to his house. They were impressed that the young Ikeda's bookshelf contained a wide variety of literature. They discovered he was most interested in philosophy. One night in midsummer, 1947, when the young Ikeda was 19 years old, Mikawa said in one of her visits, we are having a meeting on philosophy at my home on the 14th of August. Won't you come? The teacher teaches a philosophy that clarifies the essence of life. Please come. Okay, may I bring some friends? Why not? As many as you like. I'll be there too. On the 14th of August, it was close to 8pm when Ikeda and his friends reached Mikawa's place. There were around 20 people in the meeting. Young people, housewives, elderly and middle-aged men, all were listening attentively. At the front of the room, an elderly man with thick glasses and prominent forehead was giving a lecture on Buddhism, speaking with conviction. Unless we solve all our problems based on Daishonin's Buddhism, there can be no real reconstruction of our happiness. After the Q&A session that followed, Mikawa stood up and said to the man, Sir, I have brought my classmate Ikeda here. The young Ikeda bowed to the man. The man said, Oh, how old are you now? 19 years old, sir. I see. I was 19 when I first came to Tokyo from Hokkaido. I was really a country boy. I had no friends, no money, and I was terribly lonely. The young Ikeda stirred up old memories in the man. After a while, 
Sir, there's something I would like you to explain to me. Alright, go ahead. Ask anything you want. Sir, what is the correct way of life? The more I think about it, the more confused I become. Well now, that is the most difficult question of all. The man started his explanations, keeping them as simple and direct as he could, so that the young Ikeda and his friends could follow. The man spoke to the young Ikeda on an equal, one-to-one -one basis, treating him as an adult. After asking a few more questions, Ikeda thought to himself, How clearly and sincerely this man answers. There is no confusion in him. I think I can believe and follow this man. Ikeda knew nothing about Buddhism, but he was very moved by the man's sincerity. With gratitude, the young Ikeda said, Thank you very much, sir. Following your guidance that I should study and practice as befit a youth, I would like, if I may be permitted, to study under you. Allow me to recite a poem of my determination as a token of my gratitude, although it is a very poor one. Traveller, from whence do you come? And where do you go? The moon has set, but the sun has not yet risen. In the chaos of darkness before the dawn, seeking the light, I advance to dispel the dark clouds from my mind, to find a great tree unbowed by the tempest. I emerge from the earth. When the meeting ended, the man thanked Mikawa and her family and then disappeared into the darkness. For a moment, the young Ikeda had a lonely expression. The meeting left him overwhelmed and strangely enough, he felt a strong sense of closeness to the man. What role would this man play in young Ikeda's life?